Now, tens of thousands of activists are teaming up for a global day of action against biotech giant Monsanto. They claim the corporation has established a seed monopoly from the US to Asia, holding small farmers hostage to their product and forcing those who don't use it out of business. The firm has also come under increased scrutiny for the alleged health and environmental risks of its seeds. Artis Anasi Chorkina has this report. March Against Monsanto is a global uh, gla grassroots movement uh, which is going to organize these worldwide protests taking place throughout the weekend all over the world. We're talking about, they're saying that this is going to span over six continents and up to 50 countries with 400 global marches with as many as 200,000 participants in the United States alone. All of these people planning to flood out onto the streets throughout the world to speak out against this uh, uh, biotech giant accused of uh, producing genetic, genetically engineered food and agriculture. We're definitely expecting to see plenty of Occupy Wall Street activists at the anti-Monsanto protests throughout the weekend because many of the issues that are going to be addressed are certainly similar. We're still talking about the 99% versus the 1%. We're talking about corporations having great influence on politicians as well as uh, wealth inequality that continues to remain in countries throughout the world, in the United States, but also uh, when it comes to the situation with Monsanto, all of these issues continue to apply. So uh, while uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement was certainly a more general outrage at the way the system runs, uh, this particular march and these events that are taking place throughout the weekend are directed at a specific corporation that's having uh, a very controversial reputation. They're known to harass farmers throughout the world, to sue farmers, for example, in the United States. And in Canada for tens of thousands of dollars, you know, affecting businesses and farmers in places like India, really wiping off uh, any legislation that ever comes up that would affect Monsanto's business, and uh, just getting in the way uh, of people speaking out against what they see as wrong. So certainly, whereas the March Against Monsanto is against a, a specific corporation that uh, continues to do these things that hundreds of thousands of people don't necessarily agree with with, uh, uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement is certainly expected to be part of this. Well, Nick Burnaby, who's a social media director for March Against Monsanto, claims in some parts of the world the corporate giant's tactics are even leading farmers to suicide. If you look at what happened in India, I mean, there's an epidemic of suicides of the farmers because Monsanto sold them a cotton, a cotton seed that they promised would do a certain thing, and then um, those seeds didn't perform how they were supposed to. And it drove a lot of these Indian farmers into sheer poverty, and they ended up committing suicide by the hundreds and thousands, even. Monsanto uh, affects farming communities everywhere. I mean, in the United States, um, they're known for suing small farmers. There's a lot of small farmers that they're putting out of business because they have um, genetic migration into, into crops that weren't supposed to be GMO, but they're getting cross-pollinated, and then Monsanto comes in, they use their government... Um, cronies to go in and shut down small farmers because um, their their genetics from their seeds that they've patented have have slowly crept into the into the genetics of non-GMO seeds as well. Well, amid accusations the Monsanto Corporation enjoys protection from the authorities, a recent report showed the U.S. government has been aggressively lobbying for GM foods all across the world. RT America correspondent Megan Lopez reports. For years now, Americans have been concerned about the food in their refrigerators and, more importantly, the ingredients in those foods. The debate over genetically modified crops isn't only playing out in the fields, it's being harvested in the courtrooms as well as within the walls of Capitol Hill. And it turns out the U.S. government might have a bigger stake in the biotech industry than anyone could have imagined. A report released by the Food and Water Watch Group shows that the U.S. State Department played a major role in promoting GM foods and crops around the world. The report examined diplomatic cables from 2005 to 2009 to provide the first comprehensive analysis of U.S. foreign policy when it comes to the biotech industry. Now, here are the four stated goals that Food and Water Watch discovered in these cables. The first one is to promote biotech interests abroad. They tried to facilitate trade and encourage cultivation of GM crops. 
Second up, lobby foreign governments to weaken biotech rules. You can't, after all, profit off these countries if you can't get your products into them. Along with lobbying, the need to protect biotech exports by stopping trade barriers like tariffs. All this to promote and protect an estimated $25 billion industry in biotech crop exports, and in particular, one company, Monsanto, which was the biggest biotech seed company in 2011. And finally, reach out to new markets by pressuring de developing countries to adopt biotech crops. The main argument here is that these crops are stronger and can end food insecurity around the world with a growing global population. The State Department also lobbied against the labeling of these crops and genetically modified foods. They don't want any type of labels on them. Countries from Egypt to Hungary, Argentina to Mozambique were targeted in these efforts, and many of them were very receptive. Some of them actually changed their regulations as a result. Now, this lobbying started happening around the same time that Monsanto admitted to bribing Indonesian officials in an attempt to weaken environmental oversight of GE crops. Now, in the wake of these cable releases, it appears that Monsanto and other biotech firms don't need to bribe country officials anymore. They have the government to do that using taxpayer money nonetheless. It is the latest chapter in a dispute over your dinner plate. In Washington, Megan Lopez, RT. And stay with us throughout the day for live updates on the protests against Monsanto as a wave of anger over the biotech giant goes global.